tour of UAE stage three finished up Jabba V and obviously there were some ridiculous numbers because it's UAE in February so obviously everyone's going to be in top four so we need to go through these numbers because they are getting absolutely out of order uh so here's the results Tade Bigacha won uh Adam Yates second uh if you didn't watch the stage uh, I'll give you a little summary now basically what happened was Ineos hit it at the bottom full lead out style as hard as they could go and then Sepkus attacked uh Three of them got away, basically, because Pagacha Yates. Everyone else, who the juicy guys here, he like Higita, Bookman, Van Hooker, Jalmeida, Florian Stork, etc., all chased. And then Kuz got spat. And Am Yates basically attacked Pagacha about a billion times, couldn't get him away. And then Pagacha bin him in the sprint. Um, so it wasn't really a great performance, in like, just, it wasn't like Yates or Pagacha just went for it. It was very stop and surgy, which is why the time is even more ridiculous. So obviously, um, We'll go over to Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I'll try and leave the link behind. I don't really say too much, but, you know, my musings are, are could be interesting. Uh, obviously, you know, he's controversial, this boy. Uh, he chats a lot, and a lot of it is very useful. But he does come up with climbing times here. Uh, I think it's actually from Am Amati. I don't know how to pronounce his name. But anyway, he's a cycling legend as well. Follow him. Uh, but you can see the times here. Like, back in the day, 27.20, 29.15. Like, pre... I don't know, not crazy, like, obviously very fast times, but not, like, ridiculous. But this year, like, 26.16 is the fastest time there ever have been. And, like, they messed around a lot. From, like, five kilometers onwards, Yates was attacking, and then, like, you know, it wasn't like it was let out and then just really strong pace the whole way. It was very surgy and still 26, uh, still got the fastest time ever. So, obviously, we'll go over to the Strava segment. This is today's, but if we look at all times, the fastest time was actually Valverde in training. Just went out and whacked out. A 23.18. The timings are different here just because of when, you know, obviously when they take the times and all the rest of it. It doesn't really matter. I think this segment ends maybe half, like a little bit before the actual timings. But anyway, it's irrelevant. Um, the numbers still apply. 1700 VAM. You don't need to be a genius to figure out 1700 VAM is very, very fast. Basically, just go to your local climb and try and whack 1700 VAM on it. And I reckon even, it doesn't really matter how short it is, unless it's like 20%, you're going to really struggle. 1700 VAM is, is very fast um, going uphill. And obviously... They did this on, you know, a not crazy steep hill. Um, so, Tali Pigacha doesn't upload power anymore, so I don't think there's really too much point looking into that. Uh, Van Hooker didn't either, but Bookman did. Powerless, he had some dropouts, hence the lower numbers. He's a little bit heavier than the guys. And Sepkus has some higher numbers than expected. We'll go into that. And Nick Schultz is quite far down. So, we'll, we'll, we'll find the, the big favourites. So, I think we'll go through Sepkus first. Um... I think take these numbers with a pinch of salt. His numbers seem to be a bit high, uh, in my opinion. But if we just look at the, basically the bottom of the climb uh, when Ineos were launching it, and this is like 6.4 in the wheel, um, 21k an hour, 8% is is very, very quick again. Uh, and then you can see the surges start to happen here. So this is basically before he gets dropped. So if we just sort of zoom in from the hard part, um, you can see it's uh, 14 minutes at 6.7 watts per kilo. I'd say it's probably more like 6.5 based on his numbers, but still ridiculous numbers um because you know that was the lead out train and then people attacked off it and to be fair Sepkus did attack off it and i think he probably got team orders like you either need to win the stage or you work for chris harper because after that he then got dropped and then sort of just rode like steady like 360 and was getting binned um there was also some stats coming out about jao Almeida doing 6.8 watts per kilo for like three minutes and couldn't get back on yates's wheel and that shows you the accelerations they were doing uh if we now look at emmanuel bookman and um it's actually here says he's only done six watts per kilo it's it's not it doesn't seem like it's a super high performance he says he's 62 kilos like he could be less um or his power meter is not correct because it's definitely not six i can tell you that for sure it's not six watts per kilo to do that because the, the numbers don't add up here um obviously he was sitting on quite a lot so maybe you might say that but the beginning bit it says he did 6.1 in the wheel but you can do the maths and i don't think that's right so i think it's probably somewhere in between maybe 6.3 6.4 People estimate Yates did 6.6, .6, which probably does sound a little bit too high, maybe six and a half. But the spikes were ridiculous. That's the thing that's that's, that's the thing that's crazy. We've got Nilsson Powerless. Obviously, he's a slightly bigger lad. Um, but you can see there's a huge dropout here, which is never good. And then it also brings into the reliability of the whole power data. Like, you know, how um, how much do we actually trust this data? But even so, you can see here he was doing 6.2, which probably does seem like, you know, about right. And he was getting binned. Uh, by Pagacha and Yates, um, which is like 420 watts. He was super strong. He did about 6.4 up Santi Kalma in Girona the other week. Um, so I was super, I knew he'd go well because the testing was super, super high from that. 
And then obviously the sprint towards the end was, uh, again, 6.2 watts per kilo, 25k an hour, up a 7%. It's pretty, pretty crazy. So yeah, that's more or less what Jabal Habib was like. Um, fastest time ever, pretty crazy. And like me and Lantern were talking and just like the numbers you have to do to win, like back in the day, like Rui Costa, you might say, okay, it's times 40 seconds off. But like that was, you know, it was like different days and stuff. But like, come on, it's um, it's just a different level. Like the, the the people who win, the times that happen, like it's just it's just bonkers how um how like high the level is in February. Like it's just crazy. It's the same with uh, Tour de Provence. That like, I also did a power analysis. It's just like what is going on? Um, and obviously Chris Room had a really good performance today, uh, finishing only five minutes back. So that's actually not as horrendous as I thought it was going to be. But again, also proves that like he is gone, uh, and people will say he is not gone. The boy's gone, um, and you know it's just is what it is. Uh, you can see people like Micah Potsavivo like just don't have it. Jack Hayes didn't have a good day either. But yeah, it's pretty crazy um, what is going on with the cycling world these days. Um, the numbers you have to put out are just bonkers, uh, really. And 48 seconds is a big gap because if they'd ridden four, they just swapped off turns. Would have been like a minute and a half to two minutes. Like, no joke. Like, they were on a different level. So, anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Uh, I've got some funny videos coming out um, in the next couple of days. So, I, I hope you're going to enjoy them. Uh, but, anyway, make sure to subscribe and like. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Eh.